I have to say something in the intro and I don't have anything in my mind besides the word kawaii. I don't know. What's up, internet? How's it going? Today's video is quite an interesting one. Not as all of our other videos are not interesting enough. It's just, it's just that today, today you really can discover some uh, new bands and new music for you to listen to. We are back with another world indie edition of ours, a series about different indie music from all around the globe. We already did South Korea, France, Hungary, and today we're back in Asia, a country with lots of mysteries. A uh, country stereotypically considered a bit weird and fucked up in a way. Japan. It's Japan. Today we are in Japan. I've never been there, unfortunately, but I really want to go one day because I, I really enjoy Japan and uh, Japanese culture as far as I'm aware of it. Japan seems, uh, well, yeah, sometimes a bit weird, but it's, I think, due to the fact that we Europeans, Americans, we're just not really used to it. It's just different. Musically, of course, there's a bunch of genres I can't really imagine, for example, existing in the UK, like J-Rock or Visual K. It was just a bit weird, like it's, mm, like, why? <laughs> it's Japanese, why is it in... Why is it in North Carolina? Why is some Manchester band trying some Visual K? That's just weird, you know what I mean? But in Japan, there are also bands who stylistically, visually, sonically, uh, are much more familiar. They perform in a much more familiar manner. Talking about indie music, underground Japanese music, we actually have quite a lot of bands for you today in the list, which is great, right? I'll try not to talk too much about each and every band. Everyone's is gonna be included in our world indie playlist we have. You can pause the video right now and click right here to find it. And the link is also in the description as always. Also, from the very beginning, I need to say this, but I don't speak Japanese. All I did back in the day was watching some animes. Anime? Anime? Animes? This video is so embarrassing. And yeah, sometimes I do really want to re-watch some of them and watch some new ones because I'm pretty sure there are a bunch of really good new ones as well, which I didn't see yet. And I also have a couple of English-speaking Japanese friends, but I mean, it's not enough to actually know some Japanese, actually speak some Japanese and to pronounce everything correctly. So I'm really sorry if it sounds wrong or slash and funny to you, if you know Japanese, if you're aware of how it's pronounced and everything, blah, blah, blah. I tried to get some help with Google Translator, so blame Google if you want to blame someone. We're starting off with a band who can sound quite different at times. There are two sides of them. One is this melodic indie rock, um, really full second, third albums, guitars, reminiscent indie rock. And the other part has this moody, post-punk vibes, accompanied with sometimes fully spoken, spoken word lyrics. I'm talking about a band called <clears throat> Keinoku Teikoku. I know, I know. I know. Tracks I recommend you to listen from them are just going to be in our playlist, so yeah, check them out there. If you are interested in more post-punk but less moody and more noisy, try listening to a band called My Dead Girlfriend. I really love the band name. <laughs> or some true garage rock, another greatly named band. Seagull screaming, kiss her, kiss her. How? Just how do they come up with those names? <laughs> There's a band who heavily reminded me of earlier block party, but still with its own Japanese originality. They're called Sparta Locals, and they have some real amazing guitarists in some of the tracks. Um, yeah, they're actually pretty great, check them out. That's called Andy Mori is the next one. I actually know Andy Mori from somewhere. Yeah, I just know them for quite a long time, I think. They have uh, quite same guitar riffs, less noise and much more pop appeal. If you like acoustic guitar light-hearted tracks, then you'll probably really like this band. I know quite a lot of instrumental indie rock bands in Japan as well, which I think is quite popular out there. My favorite right now is probably this band called Light, who do this nice post-rock and math rock tracks. I really missed listening to math rock. Some of those tracks sound just incredible, and I really recommend you to listen to their stuff. More math rock for you, but this time with cute female vocals, try listening to a band called Tricot. 
Trico, 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 right? Trico, Trico. Also from my electronic based math rock, go listen to Toe on Bandcamp. Pretty good. Shoegaze music is for some reason also heavily connected to Japan in my mind. I believe it's also quite popular out there. Maybe I made it up, but yeah. If you know something about shoegaze music scene in Japan, let me know your thoughts. I want to mention some bands who try to mix up stuff. It's not really that shoegaze even, but um, still, they're, they're nice bands. A band called The Finn uh, play this kind of almost dream pop-like tracks. Some of them reminded me of Tame Impala, maybe from their earlier stuff. Uh, some of other tracks have just this really nice pop vocals. Yeah, and they also sing in English, so if you wanted to listen to some Japanese music without Japanese, then yeah, here you go, The Finn, try try them. Another music band from the shoegaze scene, I guess, I'm not sure, is Indigo La Ant, who uh, in most of the tracks have this really mysterious, wavy, relaxing sound, with this mellow vocal delivery and quite beautiful instrumental additions like strings on some of the tracks. So yeah, this is a video about music in Japan and how can we talk about music in Japan without talking about anime? Which we already mentioned in this video, but hell yeah! Let's talk about it more! Anime's opening and ending themes are a huge deal, in my opinion. Anyone who loved some anime remembers some of the most iconic openings. I mean, even Pokemon. We do remember, we all do remember the Pokemon opening track or like Sailor Moon or something. I even remember starting watching some animes just because I thought the opening track was sick. So yeah, basically the opening tracks, the closing tracks are really important. There were some animes with foreign songs used for its openings and its endings. Um, like my ultimate favorite anime, Ergo Proxy, it has Radio Hat's song playing in its closing theme. Ready a fucking head. This anime, y'all, it's sick. If you haven't seen it, close everything and watch it. It's fucking amazing. Or Higashi no Eden with Oasis, my ultimate favorite band. No. Uh, playing in its opening. And it's actually not the worst track by Oasis. It's, it's actually a pretty good opening. Just because, just because it plays in the opening of this really great anime. I can, I can admit it's okay. But yeah, those are quite rare. Mostly uh, the producers try to use songs by Japanese bands. The ones we're gonna mention, I think are kind of indie rock and uh, they're actually quite famous ones. It's Asian Kung Fu Generation band and the band called Flow. Both prefer to play this uh, quite uplifting, catchy rock music with some melodic verses and quite usual vocal delivery with lyrics fully in Japanese. It's kind of like perfect for uh, anime opening. Guitar music is great and all that, but let's talk about electronic music for a moment because I'm a huge electronic music fan and yeah, I dug up Bandcamp for this and found some jams for you to listen to. I love weird and quirky electronic production. Some of my favorite electronic producers uh, do collaborate with Japanese music artists, which says a lot. I think due to all the silliness and the cuteness Japan has to offer, plus the interesting, colorful, unusual production uh, it prefers to use in its pop tracks, in its electronic music tracks and all that. I found this real cool electronic music producer from Tokyo, who I believe is just 19 years old, at least that's what his Facebook page says, who prefers to be named Yujiko, Ujiko, I'm sorry, or Snail's House. I, I, I prefer Snail's House. If you crave some correctly produced electronica, uh, which sometimes reminds Persona soundtrack. Do you know Do you know the Persona video game series? I'm obsessed with it. It's so good. This kind of PC music mixed cashmere cat. Then yeah, we'll probably really get Snail's House music. Try it, it's pretty good. You probably know already as well that we also love uh, experimental electronic music, so I had to find something experimental and I found something. I discovered pew, few, beef, pew, I don't know. It's all you really need from the Japanese experimental scene. It's really surreal and really like modern art and it's definitely not for everyone. But listen, try it out, especially if you're high or on drugs or just feeling funny, try it. 
it probably would kick hard. <laughs> if you like noise music, try Makur Nympha or Yasuhito Fujinami. He has this sick EP on his band camp I have listened to. If you don't understand the appeal of noise music, then I don't recommend that. But for everyone else, check it out. I think Japan has quite a lot of great noise musicians. Drag me in the comments if I'm wrong about it, but yeah, listen to this one. It's pretty good. Less noisy and more mellow, more sample field electronic production. Go try and find Where Is Alex. Apparently he's sampling at his Bandcamp page, but I'm He remixed my favorite Flume track and it's really good. Guy's great, go listen to him. Some instrumental beauty for your ears. Uh, go listen to Yuama Hiroto. It's very beautiful, very pleasant instrumental music. Could work as the background, could work as the setting mood kind of music. It's a great find. For a fans of instrumental hip hop, me, me, it's me. I really recommend you to check out Brock Beats stuff. Some real nice lo fi beats there. The 80s aesthetic will never die now, huh? <laughs> I found a perfect artist for the 80s lovers, for the computers lovers, for the Vaporwave lovers, try Computer Dream. It's quite a chill music with its lo-fi appeal and heavy nostalgia vibe. Uh, we'd include more in our list, but yeah, we don't really have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. But yeah, if you know any more Japan-based indie music artists, let us know in the comments. We'd be really happy to check them out. Big shout out to my friend for recommending some of the above mentioned bands. We're gonna mention him on Twitter, so go check him out and say big thank you for this. Also, don't forget to like and to share this video as well as to check out all of our other world indie videos we did. And uh, you can also subscribe to our channel for more videos like this or just more indie music related videos in general. Let the meat cake be weird and proud and of course, peace off.